There were patients who had been there for more than 30, 30, 60 years. Bhavana Agarwal talks about her first Seva, selfless service project in New York City. Most of them could not talk or move and their families have stopped visiting them and they're just lying there waiting, waiting to just pass waiting. on. But something changed when Bhavana and her Sai friends showed up. Every patient that we went to and we sang for, as soon as they saw the group, there was a sparkle in their eyes and that's how we could tell how happy they were to see us. And that touched my heart and I'm going to tear up again now, but sorry. It's the experience Bhavana was waiting for. Like That really connected me to Swami's message and that kind of instigated a faith in me that yes, I'm not alone in the world, there's somebody who's always going to be by my side. Welcome to Sojourns and to Sai Baba follower Bhavana Agarwal. This interview was recorded in the Pocono Mountains at the Mid-Atlantic Sai Regional Retreat in Pennsylvania on May 25th, 2019. Bob, now how did you become to be drawn so close to Sai Baba? By the way, welcome to Sojourns. Thank you, Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Um, I first saw Swami's picture in uh, my aunt's house. I was a very young child and I just seemed to always be fascinated every time I used to go visit her. I used to be so fascinated um, with the picture, like I would be this small and I would look up and there's this person with big hair, beautiful smile, and I would get mesmerized and my mom would always pull me away. What are you looking at? Just move away from here. And then I forgot all about Swami. And uh, in 2012, I was um, in between jobs, I was waiting for my visa to come through and I reconnected with a friend who used to work with me in, um, in a company and we had lost touch for a good 10 years. We reconnected again and she had some project in Washington. She asked me to come with her and I went with her. I'm resting at a hotel, she was at her conference, she texted me, Google up Sai Center and we should go to Bhajan's. So I have been brought up in a very spiritual, religious family. I know what bhajans are. We have had several spiritual and sure. religious ceremonies at home. So I was like, okay, you know, it's been a while since I did bhajans, might as well go. So we Googled up um, Bethesda Sai Center and we went there, but by the time we reached, everything was over. So as we were getting out, they were out of nowhere, literally two boys appeared and they started talking to my friend. And I was of course like standing on the side uh, don't know anything, don't want to, nothing to do with this. And they say, well, there's a Manhattan Sci Center, why don't you go there? I'm like, oh yeah, maybe someday. And they emailed me the link. As luck would have it, I got busy, I forgot about the email, didn't really pay attention. March 30th, Ugadi Day, um, I finished work, it happened to be a Thursday. And I never finished work early, that day I finished work early and I'm walking towards the station. And I'm flipping through my phone. I don't know how a three month old email will pop up again on my screen, but it did. And it reminded me, oh, this place is right next to me. We got, let, let me go check it out. So I went there and uh, the talk was over, bhajans were going on. And I sat to the back of the seat trying to be absolutely anonymous, <laughs> as anonymous as I could be. And suddenly I felt tears rolling down my eyes. Really? Yeah. And I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, why am I crying? This is so weird. I do not want to be seen by strangers uh, seeing me cry and I didn't really want to be there. So I tried to sneak out, but president of Sai Center, Raj Bhushan uncle would be like, no, 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 sit down, sit down, just leave after the RV. So I stayed. And uh, as I finished, um, he introduced me to a couple of young adults, assuming I was a young adult. And uh, one of the girls said, uh, would you like to come to service on Saturday? To me, coming from India, service was, the, the Indians used for the job, the word service. Something, I don't understand why she's calling me to her job. I'm like, where do you work? She says, I'm a nurse, I work at the hospital. I said, and you want me to come to the hospital? She's like, yeah, come to the hospital. Okay, sounds weird, but I'll go. So. I went and I realized on Saturday that it was not her job hospital. It was one of the many beautiful services that the Sai Center does to the community. It was a long-term facility. We go there, we distribute food, we sing bhajans, we take the patients out, we talk to them, we pray for them. And on the very first day of service, um, I was assigned the most 
serious ward. There were patients who had been there for more than 30, 36 years. Really? Really. Some of, most of them could not talk or move. 36 years? Yes, and their families have stopped visiting them. They have nobody who visits them anymore. Their, their relatives have given up on them and they're just lying there waiting, waiting to just pass waiting, on. Yeah. And every patient that we went to and we sang for, as soon as they saw the group, there was a sparkle in their eyes, and that's how we could tell how happy they were to see us. What a wonderful seva. Yes, it was so beautiful. And you didn't even know what you were doing. No, I d really didn't. And that touched my heart in some very strange way. Maybe you had the tears in advance of that experience. Probably, yes. And I'm going to tear up again now, but sorry. But that was like, that really connected me to Swami's message, you know. Help ever, hurt never. and. You know, seva is always first, put seva first. So that, that aspect of service really drew me to Swami. But I'm like, okay, this was nice. I came back home feeling very different in my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, come next Thursday, I automatically found myself walking to the Sai Center again. <laughs> and that day, the next Thursday, Somebody gave a talk and he mentioned something about soldiers. Really? Yes. <laughs> and they showed a small clipping. I'm like, this seems to be a very interesting site. Let me go check it out because I'm not much of a person who can sit and hear long discourses. I connect to small little things, real life events. A lot of people are like you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm one of them. So I came home that night. Um, and I watched back-to-back -back soldier videos. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. And I could not sleep. I watched at least 12 or 13 of the videos back-to-back. Oh -back. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, um, there's so many people talking about this. And by the way, Ted, I cannot thank you enough because that night changed something in my heart. Did it really? It really did. It connected me to Swami in many, many ways, which at that point of time, I didn't know about. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> I really didn't know about what I was getting into. And slowly and steadily, Swami kept pulling me in. Every Thursday, this became my routine, no matter what. I even told my job, I'm sorry, Thursdays, I will not stay back late anymore. I will go. I have to go. Oh, you give me chills. It's also cold out here it at this is. retreat <laughs> in the Poconos, but yes. you give me chills with your story. It's so beautiful. Yes, and every single day that I've been there, um, I used to travel a lot for my job. Those were the only Thursdays I would miss the Sai Center or the Saturday Seva project. Just because of that? Mm -hmm. Nothing and else would keep you away? Nothing. There was no other. That was my life on Thursdays and Saturdays. And tell me more, did you ever have another experience in your life as touching as the realization that there you are helping people who have been confined for 30, 36 years and their eyes, presumably, their eyes only lightened up and sparkled when they saw people like you coming to be with them. I, don't. I think we are all instruments of Swami, so we cannot take the credit. He chooses the people, he brings them to himself. I don't know what made him call me of all the people. <laughs> I hope it was something that he saw in me. I hope I'm living up to his expectations. Well, you can add to that that Swami has called you to give your story on Soul Journeys today. <laughs> Thank you. We're here at the Mid-Atlantic Retreat. It's a four-day event. It's in ice cold <laughs> the Pocono Mountains in 2019, Memorial Day weekend. And I walked past you and you said something about the soldier's interviews changed my life. And I yes. Thought, I should probably think about trying to interview her. <laughs> and you resisted. And look at this beautiful story that unfolds, that the likes of which I've never heard before, quite like this. Okay, okay. Um, I'm speechless. But yes, your videos were so inspiring because as you, I think amongst all the other service projects, you do one of the greatest surveys by providing these videos. Well, I really mean it's it. You're the one providing the seva, the service by sharing your story. You, you know that. I, <laughs> I just run the camera, I turn it on. <laughs> Thank you. But, um, so yes, um, through the soldiers' videos, I learned so many experience from experiences of other people coming to Swami at that, and that kind of instigated a faith in me that, yes, I'm not alone in the world. There's somebody who's always gonna be by my side. I hope you really feel that. I do. I, I hope you can help communicate that to 
hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people. And maybe you are doing that right now. I hope so. I hope so. I, feel, I wish everyone could feel his presence the way I feel him, his presence in my life. Well, know that your service to Baba is far greater than the service you think you're doing. All of it speaks out to others who observe you in that place where these people have been shut-ins forever, uh, as well as in the hearts and minds of others who know you as a result of coming close to Baba. I just know it's true. Thank you. So you asked me about the other, any other experience. Uh, there's another service that we cre that do at uh, 30th Street, First Avenue in Manhattan. It's a food service, and there's also a, another service that happens right before that. It's at Bowery. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an amazing group of people who have been doing it for more than 30 years, every Saturday. They don't have any other social life. They go. Some of the women get up as early as 3 a.m. in the morning, and they cook trays and trays of food, 12 trays, 15 trays of food. They wake up every Saturday morning, 3 a.m., to cook this food. There's another person who provides service by bringing a van to them, picking up all the trays, and collecting all the trays from several homes who, who are willing to cook, and they bring it to the service. There's another bunch of people who sit there, who stand there, who set up the tables, and who bring the burners from their homes, and they provide hot piping cooked food, pure vegetarian, nicely cooked vegetarian food to everybody who comes. There's no discrimination. Well, how do you know all this? Do you, are you part of that group? Yes, I used to be. I haven't gone for the last two years because of an injury, but yeah. yes, I was very active with that. So that was my Saturday, every Saturday, going to the food service or going to the hospital service. There's a man here for those people who aren't familiar with it in Midtown Manhattan, lived up in Central Park South. I think that's what Hal Honig was his name. Yes. And he used to walk down the street with his pockets and briefcase full of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yes, I know about And give them to the people who are hungry. Yes. And, and he may have been a part of the inspiration for some of the members of this group because this was a number of years ago. He absolutely was. and. It's inspiring to see so many people come rain, snow, shine. They are there. They are serving. And some days we would stand there from 1 o'clock till 6 o'clock. They make sure that the food is given out. Every scrap of food is given out to people. So we just stand there waiting for people to come and they could take as much food as we could. So coming back to the story, we serve in front of a rehab center. And uh, there are a lot of people who come from the rehab center to eat the food. There was one person who came to eat the food. He was piling up his plate and he was looking at the food as if he had probably not seen the side of food for many, many days. And towards the end of the um, plate where his plate was full, he was so excited, he was so eager to eat the food, he put the first morsel in his mouth and he happened to be standing right in front of Sai Baba's picture. As soon as he put the first morsel in his mouth, it went down and he fell right there. But Baba protected him. He was right there. He fell down. He we fell got, down. He fell down after unconscious the first after food. the first morsel of food because probably he had not eaten for days. Mm -hmm. So paramedics are always around. They came, they survived him. And there were people who like, instantly there was a big group of people who came to his help. We took him to the hospital nearby and Vayu is right there got him treated, got him food, and for the next so many days, the group made sure that he was being provided for. That's tremendous. And the most beautiful part of it is, as soon as he healed, he started coming every Saturday, not just to eat the food, but to come and serve. His life was turned around. Yes, he came to serve. By that generosity, by that selfless service that he ended up doing himself. That's, that's a beautiful story. Yes. I'm, I'm prompted to ask a question I don't think I've asked of others, and it's about selfless service, which sounds completely self-explanatory. But for those who are seeing this, whether they're Sai devotees or not, and, and many have not done selfless service. It's, they don't have the time. They have all the reasons of the world. Maybe they really would like to, but they know they can't. Say maybe one thing more that would help them see that the selfless service as much as it's seemingly helping other people, it seems to also really be helping the giver, the person. So Swami has always said, never consider service as you're doing service to others. You're only doing for 
yourself. It's our egos that we satisfy by doing service because we feel so good after doing something like that. Having said that, you know, you can term it selfless or you can term it as selfish as it can be. But to me, service is service. If you, even if you think about doing something good, Swami will turn it into a selfless service. <laughs> you have so inspired me uh, and you will, through soldiers, inspire others. I'm so grateful that Baba pointed me in the direction to see your Sai gaze Ram. so that you could say what you said, Sai so Ram. that this would happen. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram.